Amen. And uh, we're going to move right along. We, uh, we begin this everyday uh, discipleship class and uh, uh, teaching or again I don't know what you call what I do but I, I intend to teach but I usually can't help but get excited and then it turns into preaching so y'all are even not sure what I do because some people say I enjoyed your teaching and some people say I enjoyed your preaching so amen whatever it is I hope you enjoy it amen uh, um, Matthew chapter number six is where we'll start at and and we're going to cover, it's going to be very difficult tonight for you to follow along in your Bibles, though I would like for you to try. I'd like for you, if you would, uh, and we're going to, uh, um, if I, it, it really wasn't practical for me to make a handout tonight because it is just too much stuff. And, uh, but you're probably going to want to take some notes. Uh, every day, the first one's ministry. Uh, the second one is prayer. And the third one we talked last week, which is, does anybody remember? Evangelism. Evangelism. We've got to be a witness. Amen. Every day. How many of you know if you look to be a witness, you, you can be one every day? Right? Right? We can be a witness. We find an opportunity to witness every day. Lord's doing great things, saints. Hear me right now. The Lord's doing great things. The other day, the Lord laid a local preacher on my mind to pray for him, the possibility of a relationship being cultivated there. And I'll be, if Monday night he didn't call me, want me to pray for him. Huh? Hey. I told you all the other night, maybe it was just, we kind of have church on Monday nights. In case you don't, if you play hooky on Monday nights, you should be here. Because we visit, we fellowship, we pray, we have a good prayer meeting, uh, 45 minutes or so of prayer, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, and then we have good Bible study afterwards. And some good, I got through with Bible study, and I kind of hurried because I kind of thought they were ready to go, and they just kept on visiting after I got done. So, I mean, we know what I'll do next Monday. I'll just teach the whole time. No, I'm just, I'm just teasing about that because it's good. Fellowship is good. Matthew 6 and 11 part of the Lord's Prayer. It's an integral part of what's commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. And it's not actually even a prayer we're supposed to pray verbatim. We're, we're not necessarily, though you can. There's no rule that says that you cannot pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You can pray that way. But it's a prayer pattern. It's a pattern for prayer. And an important or integral part of it is give us this day our daily bread. It's important to note that this has two applications. The first one is the obvious one, which is give us the daily food we eat. I like food. Food's a good thing for the most part. The Bible said every good and perfect gift cometh from above. I, so I'm going to thank the Lord and, and, and put the Lord involved in the, my daily bread or my daily eating, the sustenance that I need every day. But the second application of that is the Bible, the Word of God, when he says give us this day our daily bread. How many of you know the Bible fits you every day of the week? Every day. John 6 and 51. Jesus said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man, I love it when he says that. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. We know he's talking about Calvary, the sacrifice that was made. But Jesus was the living bread. John 1 and 14 says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. The word was Jesus Christ. And Jeremiah 15 and 16 says, Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. It is apparent from the scripture that we are to eat or to take in a portion of the word of God daily. Now those of you that, that have followed, well, try to eat healthy. I've tried to eat healthy. I hate trying to eat healthy. I would rather eat healthy on accident than try to do it on purpose. If you do it on accident, it's not a big deal. But you try to do it, there's nothing good for you. But 
if you remember in health class in school, and, and they, they talked about the food groups, right? The pyramid, how many you're supposed to have because you are what you eat. And uh, the, the, the things that you take in is what makes up your body. And the Bible is a type of eating, the Word of God. We are, in fact, what we consume or what we eat of the Word of God. There are two major words in the Bible that refer to the Word of God or that are translated as word in the Bible, W-O-R-D, our English word. But remember this, as, as you're studying the Bible and as you learn, that several different Greek or Hebrew words, whatever the case may be, Aramaic in some cases uh, can have more than one meaning and more than one English word that they're translated into or more than one Greek or Hebrew word. So word, for instance, uh, is translated from more than one Greek word. So you may, you know, A-E-I-O-U in Greek may all be translated as the same word in English, though you have to study it out. That's why we have a, a ton of books that are available, dictionaries and concordances and what have you. We're going to touch on that shortly. But if you desire to really study the Word of God, everything you need is available. These two major Greek words... Man, I want to get done tonight. If I go over for a few minutes, will y'all be mad? Thank you. I'm glad that you're not going to be mad. <laughs> the two major Greek words that are translated as word in the Bible are logos or logos, L-O-G-O-S, and rhema, R-H-E-M-A. That's the two major Greek words that we find in the Bible. Logos or logos is a more general term. And it's used, Brother Billy, over 300 times in the New Testament. The Greek word logos is translated word in the New Testament. It generally refers to the Bible in its entirety, from Genesis to Revelation. But it also refers into the first chapter of John. It refers to Jesus Christ as he is not only God in the flesh, but he is the living word or the logos made flesh. It's the word of God. So if we put proper respect to the word of God, we are in fact reading the living word of Jesus Christ. Rhema, however, remember logos is the, the total word. Rhema focuses attention on a specific word. A rhema is a verse or portion of scripture that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, however you want to refer to it, that the Holy Ghost brings to our attention with application to a current situation or need for direction. So you can read the Word in its entirety, and as you read the daily bread generally, as we're trying to just read through the Word of daily devotion, you're reading the Logos, generally speaking. However, as you read that Word, you're putting the Word into your mind and your heart, and I'm a very strong believer in the power of the Holy Ghost to bring you back to that Word to bring you back to a particular place that you have read, that you've put in the bank, so to speak, in your mind, and speak to you for a specific occasion or a specific incident in your life. Okay, do, 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 you, do you follow what I'm saying? Logos is the complete word. It's the, it's the entire Bible, but rhema is a specific word from God through the Bible for you in a particular situation. Does that make sense? That's important that we grasp a hold of that fact. Okay, I'm not making this up. Logos is the entire word. Rhema is a specific word. It is not separate from the total scripture, but it is a part of the entire Bible. But it is a word that comes to us as sent by the Holy Ghost in response to a certain or a specific situation for which we need a specific word. Has anybody ever had a time in your life when you needed to hear a specific word from God? That's the rhema. It, it doesn't always mean the same thing. It may come across the pulpit and go over some heads and go underneath some feet, but to somebody it hits them right in their heart where they live and you rejoice and, and get excited because the Lord sent me a word. Whether the word is written are expressed. And the usual way of the word being expressed to us uh, is in preaching or in prayer. Whatever, the, wherever, whether it's written or expressed to you, its eternal character and purpose is not changed. 
Here's a beautiful thought. A word that the Bible said his word is forever settled in heaven. Brother Rice, a word, my God have mercy. I'm going to get a preaching spirit on me yet. A word that is forever settled in heaven can also be a specific word for little old me today. Right now. I like the fact when he revealed himself to John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, uh, he said, I am that is. That's the most important thing is that he is. Right now what we need was and is to come the Almighty. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All Scripture, everybody say all Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. Now that word doesn't mean that you don't ever mess up. But that word means you are complete. A mature Christian. That's the goal. Do you know that? Do you realize that? That's the goal of the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is that we become mature Christians, and the way that we're going to do that is through the Word of God. For reproof, just a little quick Bible study, doctrine, says for doctrine first, which is the teaching of the Word. Reproof, which is telling you what you're doing wrong. Correction means getting you back on the right path. Because there's a lot of people that are good at saying you're doing this wrong and you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, and then walk away. Okay? But the Bible wants to correct us, wants to, to chastise us, and then put us on the right path, and then instruction in righteousness means what? Keep you on the right path. Okay? Going to teach you what to do. The teaching of, I had a guy talk to a fellow today, him and his wife are having all kinds of problems, and, and I've been praying for him. And looks, I mean, there's a miracle that's needed, but they had been going to a church of another faith, and, and they quit going, just fell out with going, and, and I hope he's going to come here. I invited him to come to church. He said he would, but he, he said even, he, he said a good preacher is always going to make a sinner uncomfortable. Because he said his wife didn't like the preacher. Because he talked on the things that she was having trouble with. And you know what? You know what? If you go to church and you don't want to hear the truth, you wasted your time. We got we to preach truth, saints. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, we got to preach truth. And I want something to help me make it to heaven. Okay? It is in the Word of God. It is in the Word. I want you to hear this. This is an important point. It is in the Word that one sometimes, how many of you know sometimes you pray and you just don't really feel a whole lot. Sometimes, sometimes you pray and it's just like, whoosh, heaven just opened up. And then sometimes it's a struggle. Right? That will never be the case in the word of God. It is what it is. And if we approach it with the proper attitude, we will meet him in the word. Because all scripture is by the inspiration of it. It is the word from his mouth. Holy men of old wrote, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It is, our, it is in the word that we meet God. Our response to the word is a response to him. If we refuse, belittle, disobey or outright deny the word, we have done all those things to God. We don't have the option of taking the parts of the Bible we like and living with them and ignoring the parts we don't. Right? How many of you know that? We got to, we got to try to follow the word. Okay, we got to follow the word. It's my responsibility 
as the pastor of this church and Brother David, Brother Johnny, or Brother Billy, Brother Terry, Brother Pete, Brother McKinney, whomever delivers the word, it's our responsibility to encourage and inspire you to allow the rhema word to be released in your life but in order for that to have, for in order for there to be a specific word, you have to be grounded in the general word. Does that make sense? You have to have a knowledge of the word of God. You have to have been there. Basically, you've got to put in the work if you want to reap the benefits. Okay. Now, I'm not saying, don't misunderstand me, I'm not telling you that there may not be an exception when the Lord will speak to somebody and say, go to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 37 and that be a word for you that you ain't never read before. But that will most, uh, most certainly be the exception and not the rule. If you're going to get a specific word from God, it will be because the, the same way you, you can't just expect one day to, to drink one of those milkshakes that Charlie Atlas used to talk about in the back of the comic books uh, and wake up the next morning with muscles everywhere. But Brother Billy, the only way you're going to get strong is to work at it. But it's our responsibility to encourage and inspire you to allow that rhema word to be released in your life. But to have it, you must be firmly grounded in the Logos word or the Logos word, the general word, so that we are fully operating according to the will of God. And then we will be apostolic, uh, just like the apostles were, in our character and in our practice. We have to have a now word, a rhema. Too many people, now you hear me right now, I'm going to help you tonight. Too many folks that are sincere, they attend church and call themselves religious, but the Bible, the preaching, I saw somebody put on Facebook the other day that all they get out of church is the singing. If, if you don't have a now word, that's the way it's going to be. If you don't understand how to apply the word to your life, it's going to be boring, mundane, and not even applicable to us today. We have to have a now word. Many people go to church and, and they don't enjoy it. They say it's boring. That We've heard it said before, I don't like Bible study, I don't like Bible teaching because it is just so blah and dull and boring. But there's nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, I would argue that the principles that are in the Bible are more applicable today than when they were written thousands of years ago. As a matter of fact, there are things we battle today that they're warned against in Scripture that they didn't even have thousands of years ago. Right? This is what brought so much division in denominational Christianity. And this is why so many churches teach so many things. Now hear me right now, I want you to get this. This comes from folks trying to make the teaching of Scripture fit them instead of fitting themselves to the Scripture. They try to take the Scripture and make their ideology out of it as opposed to just taking it and letting it change them into the likeness of God. We must believe and teach the Scripture, but it is futile, it is weak, it is powerless to do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12 and 3 says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Second Peter 3 and 16 says, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest with. W-R-E-S-T, that's, that's a, a form of wrestle with, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. How many people have you ever seen that they tried it and tried it and tried it and tried it and then just threw their hands up and walked away? 
Because, Brother David, you'll never find a way for the Scripture to fit your life until you have fit your life to the Scripture. Okay? Until you've allowed God to mold and form and change and in some cases pound you down, start all over from scratch and make a new vessel as seemed good to him to make. Huh? Sometimes. Sometimes. The Logos word has not become a rhema word for so many people. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. This is the Logos. W-O-R-D, Logos. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14 says, and the word, that's God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So get this, the word is God, the word is Jesus. God is within us. Jesus is within us at the same time because it's the same spirit. There's just one. There's just one God. I got a beautiful article off the internet today from Brother Raymond Woodward about the Trinity. It was 100% man-made, and the, the, the reference that he gives, Brother Robbie, is that the Trinity actually came into being five or six hundred years before Jesus Christ was ever born with some fellows called Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. There is just one God. There's one on the throne, and his name is Jesus. If that's the case, if the word is God and God's within us, then the word is within us. Very good then the word must also be in us. James 1 and 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now I've got to ask you a question here. Think about this for a minute. Be ye doers of the word, which what's that mean? When the word says thou shalt not kill, you can't kill nobody. If you kill somebody, and that word actually means to commit murder, okay, but if you kill somebody... You have violated scripture. Right? Okay. You got to obey what the scripture says. The scripture says, be baptized in Jesus' name. And you be baptized any other way, you've not obeyed scripture. Right? Come on now. You got to help. You got to believe that. If you don't believe that, I'll shut this Bible and take off on the new birth Bible study. Okay? We got to obey what the Bible said. Be doers of the word and not hearers only but then it says and this is an oxymoron in a way deceiving your own selves now how does that happen where's the deception here's the deception and it's so evident in the world now think about this for a minute the deception is is we convince ourselves that if we hear somebody talk about the word, whether it be preaching or teaching, then we have fulfilled some sort of an obligation to the great church watcher, and he will mark us down for enduring another message. Brother David, I've punched my church clock on Wednesday night. I punch my church clock on Sunday morning. How many of you know that there are a lot of folks that's how that's how they live for God? That's their definition of living for God. I go to church. Ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you, this is the rest. Coming to church is rest. You live for God outside the walls of this church. We must be a preaching church. We must hear the word. But when we hear the word, it must give birth to faith, which means we believe what we hear. And the way we prove we believe what we hear is we obey it and subsequently live the word every day. It is not meant to be confined to the church building, 
But it must happen every day. Notice the trend of the early church, Mark 16 and 20. Some of the last words after Jesus Christ ascended. The Bible said, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Acts 12 and 24. But the word of God. Now this, this scripture right here can prove my whole message. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Now how did that happen? He added to the church. The church grew, but the Bible says, and you're right, brother, we're headed down, we're headed to the answer. The Bible said the word of God grew and multiplied. What happened? Is it went from a Logos word to a Rhema, to a specific word in more folks. And more folks. And more folks. And they quit being religious and were born again. They quit being just religious and the word of God became the creed or the motto for their life. So mightily, Acts 19 and 20 says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Over what? The word of God prevailed. What's the biggest obstacle that the word of God has to overcome? People, tradition, ruts that people get in, people searching till they find a preacher that tells them what they want to hear and then thank God I've arrived. I've been looking for a church all my life and I found one. Okay, we're not talking about a church that makes you feel good all the time. I, I want to be a minister that sometimes I, I hit you between the eyes with the word of God and you go home that night and you try to lay down and you can't go to sleep because the word of God is bombarding your mind and your spirit until you got to get out of bed and fall on your face before God and there's got to be a change that takes place. Second Thessalonians 3 and 1. Finally, brethren, Pray for us. That's Paul talking about praying for his evangelistic team. That the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. All this tells us is, is it's possible for us to preach our guts out, to preach the word of the Lord out, and it go out there and not be able to do in the lives of those it will do what it was intended to do. That's scripture. But maybe not for you. Because it planted the seed. It was said what needed to be said. But how we apply it to our lives determines the success or failure of the word for us. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. As powerful as the Logos word is, it will not work without a specific rhema word. That's when it becomes boring and starchy and hard to understand. It is until you allow the word of God to become personal and specific that the power of the Holy Ghost works in your life through the word of God. You have to allow it to become personal and specific. Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Us as Paul and his cohorts, Brother Billy, them as everybody else has heard the word. Everybody say they heard the word. Same gospel. Same gospel that Paul and Timothy and Titus and, and all of those heard. Same gospel. But the word preached did not profit them. Well, why didn't it? The scripture tells us. 
not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. How many people you know that actually show up for church and feel like they fulfilled their obligation just by hearing the preacher preach? We have totally missed it, Brother David, if that's how we feel. We have got to take every word. You hear me right now, and I don't care who preaches it. We get bad preacher religion. I know y'all don't. But if a, if a person comes in here that's not educated, that's not learned, that's not dynamic in how they, they, they bring the word, but if they get up there and they read their text from the word of God, they got something important to say. And it's a word for you. How many times have we missed a specific word from God because we discounted the messenger? Every time I hear the word, my prayer has got to be, Lord, let me apply it to my life. Let it, I, I want you to know the word God can enter into my ears and work its way through my entire body till it finds the part it needs to fix and then you go ahead because I've got to hear a word. 7 and 13 of Mark. Making the word of God of none effect. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Saints of God, I, I've got to, and I'm building a staff, but I want to get some people that can speak into my life that if I ever get going through the motions, if I ever just get to, you know, if I can make it through another service, Lord, just give me a word that they'll like, that they'll feel good. If I ever start going through the motions, I want somebody to slap me upside the head. We can never become a ritualistic group of people. We have got to learn to let the Holy Ghost have his way in everything we do. Because it ain't about me and it ain't about you, but it's all about him. And if we ever make it about us, he will excuse himself from us. Because he will not share. And the Bible said no flesh can glory in the presence of the Lord. And if we insist on glorying, he will insist on making his way out. He's not going to share. He's a jealous God. That's why we got to pray every day, crucify the flesh. You can't belong to him unless you've crucified the flesh. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. We're not just preaching the word. We're not just verbalizing the words, but we're preaching in power and preaching in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. Notice what I'm telling you. As you. This is all about taking the Word in every day. It's about taking the Word in every day. Fortunately, you get to come to here preaching three nights a week, three times a week, but that's not enough. My goodness. We got to preach the Word with power. But you hear me right now, I'm going to give you a good revelation. You've got to learn to receive the word with power. Not just when we preach the word, Brother Terry, but when you read the word in your own little private devotion. The word of God will speak to you in as powerful, if not more powerful way, when it's just you and him, if we can get ourselves to focus uh, and get off of us and get on him. The Lord's got something to say to us every day, every day, every day. Give us day by day our daily bread. And then 6 and 17 of Ephesians says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word, and that is translated from the Greek word rhema, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Fighting, hear me right now, we learn to fight a specific enemy with a specific word. We learn to deal with a specific situation with a specific word. Brother Pete, we learn to come against the devil. I say we learn. How many of you know we learn? It takes some effort. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brother Rice, we learn to use the scripture. 
Now, it doesn't do any good if the devil's coming at you or, or the flesh is tempting you with, say, pornography for you to say, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Or so Jesus wept. Oh, I got it. But if you have a specific problem through, and listen to me, everybody in here, you, knows what you, you know what your problems are. They're not a mystery to you. You know where your weaknesses are. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. There is a specific word of God in that Bible for every situation that you and I battle with in our lives. A specific word. Notice this. When Jesus was in the wilderness, tempted of the devil, and he fasted, Brother David, 40 days, can I tell you Jesus was weak? Maybe not in the spirit, but his flesh was weak. And think, think about it for a minute. When I'm weak, He's strong. And where do I find him? In the word. No. Notice he was weak. And the devil said, if. That's the first thing the devil's always going to come at you with. If you, are you, are you really living right? Are you really making an effort to try to do right? If you're who you say you are. That's what he said to Jesus. Speak to these stones to be made bread. He spoke right into Jesus' weakness. Because his weakness right then was the body. At 40 days, you've gone past the stage of wanting to eat. But you need to eat. He spoke into a legitimate weakness of Jesus Christ. But notice what, Jesus was weak, Brother David. But when I'm weak, he's strong. And what Jesus do? It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the devil's strategy is blown to pieces. Because there may be a time, you hear me, that's why we got to get the word in us. There may be a time when you're going through a trial. When you're going through something weak spiritually, you may be broke as a joke. You may be sick in your body. You may be fussing and feuding with your wife. Or you may be laid off from your job. Your car broke down. All kinds of things gone wrong in you. But there's still strength in the word of God. And when the devil comes against you trying to tear you down and rest assured, he will. You may not have a word from the Spirit, but you've got some bread. There's a word. It's a specific word. It's in here. It's in here. He responded with a specific scripture that revealed and destroyed the lies of each temptation because you know the word is truth. The word is truth. The scripture Kept him on the right track when the flesh was weak. Acts 10 and 44. Cornelius been praying. The angel came down and told him to go find Peter. He'll tell you what to do. Cornelius, Brother McKinney, is looking for salvation. He's looking, there's something more the Lord's told him he needs. Uh, Acts 10 and 44 says, While Peter yet spake these words, it ain't no general. It didn't do Peter no good to get up there and say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But Brother Billy, Cornelius was sent by God to hear a specific word. And the Bible said, while Peter yet spake these words, what were they? Death, burial, and resurrection. That's what he preached. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. The Lord will speak through us a specific word for a specific need in a specific situation. 
Even when your own logic, even when your own mind says different, even if you know better, we often fail to capitalize on the leading of the word because it is contrary to what we know or what we think or what we feel. Luke 5 and 5, Jesus came up to some fishermen cleaning their nets. They'd been fishing all night long. And Simon answering said unto him, because Jesus said, launch out your boats and let down your nets for a great big bunch of fish. Peter said, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, Rhema, a specific word for a specific time in a specific situation. At thy word, I will let down the net. Brother Billy Peter knew in his heart of hearts that they were going to go out there. Boy, I could preach right now. Where's his faith at? When the Lord's in it, you can't stop it. Even though Peter knew there wasn't no fish out there that night. They ain't biting. But because you said go. So what? I have decreased. And he has increased. I've got to keep myself in a place where I can hear the word of the Lord. And I even, even when everything I know says no, the word of God says yes. 2 Corinthians 1 20. I may not go over tonight. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Can I read that again? For all the promises of God. Brother Pete from Genesis to Revelation. For all the promises of God are in him. That's in Jesus Christ, Brother Billy. Yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. The English Standard Version says, For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. The NIV version says, the beginning of it, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. So the Bible is clear. All the promises of God are yes in Jesus Christ. So if he made a promise to Abraham, then that promise is also to me in Jesus Christ. If he made a promise to Joshua, then that promise is also to me in Jesus Christ. If he made a promise to David, then that promise is also to me in Jesus Christ. We can find promises from God in every book of the Bible. Truly, the little song that we used to sing, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line, every promise in the book is mine. There's a word for every situation that you're going through. I can't, I don't have time to read them all. Uh oh. But I went to the internet, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And I found. A website, a ministerial website. All it does is give chapter and verse of promises of God in every book in the Bible. So, Brother Dole, there is a promise in this book for every situation that I find myself in. A promise. There's a word. There's a rhema, Brother Billy. I told you all the other day. I told you all, remember? Remember what I told you? This, this is an example, perfect example of it. 
Or, or am I going to call you Brother Roger or that name that they call you at work? Whichever. That's fine. Brother, I was having some health problems. I thought I decided that I was going to have a heart attack. My, my left arm was killing me. I had a lot of crazy fluttering in my chest. Then I go to the doctor and they do some blood work. And, and how much was they? My triglycerides were 1,345, which normal is 150. The, the little gal that called me was scared to talk to me on the phone. I guess she was afraid I was about to die right then. So I go and I have all kinds of tests run and stuff. And while I'm down here praying one day, I, I done decided I was hanging it up. You know, I mean, I'm almost the age daddy was when he died. And, and I've always been hoping, Brother Billy, I'd at least make it there. And all I could think was, I ain't even going to make it. And I, I'm not going to make it. And, and Brother Shannon, I, and I make light of it right now, but I, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny right then because I, I was, I mean, my arm was killing me running down here. And then I, I just knew I was going to, you know, go up there and start the stress test and fall out. But I found a word in the Bible that says, I will heal your heart. And you will see the glory of God in the land of the living. I wasn't afraid no more. Psalm chapter 27, it was a word to me. Well, then I, I started preaching, and, and I know this is hard to believe, what I'm about to tell you, but everybody don't love my preaching. I don't know why. I can't for the life of me figure out why, but they don't. And I know you're wondering the same thing. I'm, I'm just teasing. I've already told this to them, but they probably don't remember, so... But I got, matter of fact, the first lesson that I preached on this series, there was some folks looking at me like if they'd have had a bazooka, I was done. And, and try as I may, I'd turn around here and that's all I could see was them few faces that, that just like, oh my goodness. You know, am I, am I preaching like the world's worst message or something? And, and I, I, I was losing my effectiveness because all I could think about was there's some folks that don't like me. And I was praying about it. I said, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. All I'm doing is, is, is trying to find a way to convince these people to like me. And the Lord said, go to Jeremiah chapter number 1. And in Jeremiah chapter number 1, it says, I have put the word in your mouth. Be not afraid of their faces. If I'm lying, I'm dying. That's the exact word that it said. That's what I'm talking about, a rhema word. That the Lord gives you a word for a specific time. You know something, Brother Pete? I've never thought about it since. It don't matter. It don't matter. Because the Lord told me that was a word and there's not enough devils in hell to take that word away from me. Tell you another time. I've told this before too. You probably won't remember it. I'll never forget it. I never will long as I live, Brother Billy. Mama probably don't even remember, but I called her as soon as I found the scripture. I called her. Y'all remember me telling you about being at the boys' ranch, and I was low, low as a snake's belly. I was even running through my mind, maybe I just need to kill myself and put everybody out of their misery. Anybody ever felt like that before? Run through your minds? I just need to. I'm miserable, and I'm making everybody around me miserable. Brother Shannon, I tried to pray. And it was like I was talking to that iPad, and it don't listen when I talk to it. I mean, it was, Brother Billy, it was just nuts. I was still having to try to preach. I was still having to, Brother, Brother uh, Pete, trying to help them old Henry boys, trying to love them when I didn't even love me. You want to try to find it hard to try to help somebody, try to help them when you don't even like yourself. And Brother Pete, I was sitting there at my desk, Gloom and doom. Boy, I was just feeling so miserable. I was even crying, and I don't cry much. I mean, tears. I mean, I was upset, Brother David. I'm ready to hang it up. 
And I saw my Bible. It's, it's laying over there. Bible that my daddy sent me. I saw my Bible laying up on the corner. Thompson Chain, Brother Johnny. It was an old raggedy Bible. I got it black tape, electric tape together. And I just drug it. Over. I'll never forget, Brother Rice. I just grabbed it by the corner and drug it over there in front of me. Y'all remember I told you? I hope you remember. First place I went, because everybody knows misery loves company, I went to Job. I got to try to find somebody has got it worse than me so I don't feel so bad. Well, them Thompson chains, are, 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 they're, they're not good for feeling sorry for yourself. So Brother Terry opened up the Bible, and I'm reading in Job and all of Job's stuff, and it ain't working. But I see a cross-reference in there, Sister Eloise. It says Psalm 37. I said, hmm. So I flipped over to Psalm 37, and it said, paraphrasing here, don't worry about the evil people. Just wait on them, and they'll get what they got coming to them. But delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And then I went to reading, Brother Rice, and it said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. And then I read next script. By this time, the hair's standing all up on my arms, uh, and I had hair on my head back then, and it was standing up too. And then the next scripture, David said, I have been young. And now I'm old. and Because here's what I, here's the truth. I was doing everything right. Brother David, I was praying. I wasn't getting nowhere, but I was praying. And the scripture said, I have been young and now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. By the time I finished reading that word, Brother Pete, I was on cloud nine. Just that fast. It's a rhema word, a specific word. And you know what, Sister Pam? The beautiful thing was is I felt it right then. That the day that the Lord impressed on David to put the pen to the paper, he had me in mind. The day that David began to write them down, no matter what he was feeling, the Lord knew GL's going to need this word. Because it was that powerful and it was that rich. The thing is, Brother Robbie, these things don't leave you. It's a specific word. I have heard thousands of messages preached in my life. I, as far back as I can remember, we've went to church. I have heard, and we used to go to church a lot more than we go to church now. And we went all the time. And I've heard hundreds if not thousands, maybe in the ten thousands of messages I've heard. And I've heard some good ones. But nothing can compare to that rhema word when he spoke into my life. And Brother Rice, it's always the perfect thing I need. Always. Always the perfect word that I need. Here are six ways, and I'm closing. Here are six ways for you to get a grip on the Bible. The first step, and I'll try to go slow. Er, the first thing you got to do always is hear the word. Go to church every chance you get. Purchase these CDs over here. Are you recording this tonight? Good. You're going to hear yourself be talked about when you buy this one. Purchase CDs. Get on the internet. Brother Terry, there's gazillions of messages on the internet. Apostolic men preaching truth that you can hear. Listen to them. Listen to them again. Sister Eloise told me she got one. Are we charging for them yet? Sister Eloise, you owe, you owe $100. That's what. <laughs> I'm, I'm just <laughs> Sister Eloise told me that she got one here a few, a few nights ago. And she said, when you listen to it again, it's way better. And I agree. I agree. It's, so, so get them and listen to them again and again and again and again. Hear it. Because, Brother Billy, faith comes by hearing. Not, the, not just the word going through your ear canal. 
but the word being applied to your life by hearing the word of God. This builds faith because faith cometh by hearing, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. The second thing is, read it. Reading puts it in your mind, and there's a blessing in reading the word. Even if you don't understand it, I told you Sunday morning, if you're reading it and you don't understand it, go to that scripture, put your finger on it, lift up your head and say, I don't get it. Pray over it. Revelation 1 and 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed is he that readeth, Brother Rice. Blessed is he that readeth, and gets it in your mind, and hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein. The third thing is, is study what you read. Study it. Compare verses on a subject. Buy you a good Bible, a good study Bible. Get you a Bible study program. Put out some effort in learning the Bible. Use commentaries and concordances. Use the internet to help with background study. There's tons of things. Don't find somebody's opinion. Get factual information. Just get the Bible. Acts 17 and 11 says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. I don't mean to embarrass her, but I don't know that she does it so much now. But when Sister Kim first came to church, everything I preached, she wrote it down and she went home and double-checked me. And I heard her tell somebody recently, everything he preaches is right in the book. Go check. Brother Billy, I got nothing to hide, nothing I'm ashamed of, nothing I'm afraid I preach wrong. How many actually do it? I've told you and told you and told you. Don't just take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. But search it for yourself. Because when you get a revelation on the oneness of God, you get a revelation on the new birth, you get a revelation on the blood and on the tabernacle, there's nothing that can take that from you. And there's not words that can describe it. Study. Study. The fourth thing is memorize. Memorize scripture. Pick a verse or maybe two or three verses that really speak to you, that really minister to you. I know mine, Jeremiah chapter number 1, Psalms chapter 27, and Psalms chapter 37. I go to them anytime. I go back and read them all the time. I do it all the time. Brother Terry, they mean something to me. They are bread. They are life. Remember what they meant to you. Remember what they meant to you in that time. And they will always mean that to you. Psalm 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word of God will keep you from sinning. But it's got to be embedded in you. The fifth thing is meditate. Think about the word. Focus thinking on each word. Read your bread. Read your bread. I encourage you to read the bread. But I'm not naive enough to think that there are times that we just are reading it for the sake of getting to read it, and that's okay. It's the time and the effort and energy you spend. But every now and again, get that Bible down and begin to search it out. Find you a few scriptures and, and meditate on them and think on them. Each word, paraphrase, and personalize the scripture. Psalms 1, chapter 1, verses 1, two, 1 through 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. My goodness, I could preach here. Y'all don't have enough time. But if you spend all your day watching soap operas and watching TV shows and, and watching all that ungodly stuff, you know, I, I talked to a sinner lady the other day and, and all she's talking about how she loves the Kardashians and she loves keeping up with the, the housewives of, of, you know, Timbuktu or wherever they are. And I told her, I said, you need to quit watching that junk. It ain't real. That ain't real life. You need to quit watching that junk. 
Don't inundate your mind with all kinds of ungodliness and immorality and, and, and people in adultery and people fornicating and, and all kinds of nutty stuff. But the Bible says in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meditate, think on the scriptures. Don't be thinking on all kinds of junk. How many of you know it's out there? That a large portion of our world, that all they put in their mind is junk. I've told you before, if you buy the Inquirer and you buy all them Hollywood gossip magazines, shame on you. That, that ain't none of our business, who they liking today. Or who they stepping out with or what they're wearing. Who gives a rip? If you knew the real person, you probably wouldn't even like them. And the sixth thing is, apply it to your life. Find the timeless principle. Let the word of God build a bridge between where you are and where you need to be. And then pray those promises that you find. Let's stand. Back to James 1 and 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We hear the word. We hear the word preached. Sometimes the sermons are better than others, Brother Billy. It's just the way it is. Sometimes they are. But they're always, if I have sought after God, Brother David, if we seek after the Lord and study and prepare, there's a word for somebody. Not a logos, not just a general word, but Brother Rice, a word that will grip you way down inside. You know. Sister Maria shared with us Monday. Uh, last week I was, I was praying for a while and then a buddy of mine, a preacher friend of another denomination showed up to talk to me. And Sister Maria came in here to pray and she was feeling something in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost, she opened the Bible getting ready to find her reading scriptures and something said just read that and it spoke exactly what she was feeling. I'm telling you saints of God, we put... I want you to respect me. I want you to, to appreciate me. I, and I mean, I really like it when you shake my hand and say I did a good job. But if I can get you to have a better walk with God than I do, I will have considered myself a success. If I get you to study the Word of God more than I study, if I get you to pray more, if I can get you to understand how important you are to the kingdom... Don't ever set a preacher up on a throne. We're all just trying to get to heaven. But you've got to push me at the same time as I push you. We have to. The Bible said, as iron sharpeneth iron. You go try to sharpen a, sharpen a knife with a washcloth. Iron sharpeneth iron, so doth a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. There's a word for you, saints. Wonder what's happening out there. Let me tell you, I'm planning on, I plan on us having great big going away parties for missionary couples leaving this church to go preach the gospel across the seas. I plan on us having going away parties and go help somebody. I, say, I done got a city in my mind where we can go start a church up. Hireville don't have a church. Matthews don't have a church. Risco don't have a church. Parma don't have a church. Kiwani don't have a church. LaForge doesn't have a church. No, East Spray doesn't have a church. But if you don't start hearing a word from God, if all it is you hear is just preaching from me, you're not ever going to get there. But if you let the word of God speak to you, if you receive a specific word of God, now all of you, don't start saying, Lord, I ain't listening no more if he's preparing that kind of stuff.
Don't you want God to use you? There is no fulfillment like being fulfilled in the kingdom of God. There's no amount of accolades you can get, Brother Billy, other than to kneel down before God, lift your hands up, and know you're in the perfect will of God Almighty. There's nothing better. Just for a second, just, just for a few minutes, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, whatever you want, let's all find somewhere and pray. And, and pray a specific prayer. Word of God, speak to me. Lord, give me a hunger for the word of God. Give me a hunger for a rhema word. Give me, let me be come up to church every service waiting on a specific word of God from whoever's ministering the word. Just a few minutes, let's talk to the Lord tonight. We got to, this is a house of prayer. It's a house of prayer.